four to five. Uh, this is the Wednesday, September 9th, 2020 meeting of the Northampton Historical Commission. And um, I wanted to just say that pursuant of the governor's emergency order, modifying the state's open meeting law, um, this meeting is being held remotely and it is being recorded. Um, okay. Uh, I wanted to begin the meeting tonight by opening up for general comment. Does anybody have public comment? I think we only have, only have one member of the public present other than ourselves. Um, if there are any comments um, that you would like to make, you're welcome to do it now. No, I'll wait. I think I'm on the agenda. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Um, we don't have any minutes, so we are going to skip right over to the continuation, which is a continuation of the request uh, to the local historic district commission for a certificate of appropriateness to replace um, the garage roof at the residence at 218 Elm Street. Um, it is currently made out of slate and uh, the proposal is to replace the roof with um, asphalt shingle. And um, just to remind everybody, this is a continuation from the last meeting. We had a split vote at the last meeting and um, as a way to gather more information because at the time we did not have a physical sample of the roof material, only a photograph. Uh, we asked that a demonstration be set up for us to view and that we would consider um, uh, doing um, a certificate of hardship if we believe it to be appropriate. Um, so I'm assuming the commissioners have all taken a look at the shingle. Yes. Maybe not Pauline. I have not. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and then also was 28 Kensington. They said that the similar material had been used for that roof. Mm -hmm. So I looked at that roof too. Okay. I think that was you, Okay. Um, that was Harrison. Great, 28 Harrison. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. So uh, we will have some discussion about this. And then I think we, I believe we need to have another uh, vote to decide what we want to do. But would anyone like to start? Well, Barbara, why don't you start? Oh, Craig. Okay, Craig. Yes, I went to look at it today and saw that the roof was indeed very deficient and saw that the, it's really not, I didn't think it was visible from Elm Street because it's set back far enough. You don't, you really don't see it. If you're going by at 40 miles an hour in order to see that or 35 miles an hour, you're, you're really not in a safe situation if you're if you're trying to look at that garage going by at speed but you can see it of course from from the side street and it um you know the new sh the new shingles are are pretty common we've all seen them around town they're 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 not slate but then again uh this slate that's on the roof currently is 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 not the uh the kind of slate that that has the long life. This is the cheaper slate and it has, I think it's probably gone beyond what they ever intended it to be, it, but it has failed. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm okay in the end with the, uh, with the asphalt shingles replacement. Okay, thank you, Craig. Um, I thought that they was making, there is a vinyl, not a vinyl, an asphalt shingle that's made that looks like slate. You know, it has the grayish color. Um, is that not right? Does any? It's the the uh, asphalt we chose was one of the historical options and it is a grayish and it even has a little bit of green in it as if there was uh, some lichen or some uh, you know, plant life growing from it. So it's, it, 
when I look at this, the shingle, it looks to me a lot like the slate that, that's being removed. Yes. How, what, how does the color strike the other, if, you know, the other people, I'm wondering? Because in the photo that was, you know, that I have that was originally sent, it looked much darker, I think. <laughs> Well, I would say that um, it's a little hard to tell what the color of the slate on the barn is now, the barn, excuse me, the garage is now because it has a lot of biological growth on it. Um, so it, I think it really masks um, what the original color is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, if the growth were removed, it would probably look a lot different than it does now. So. Yeah, how about and the new, on the new sample though, is the new sam is the new sample grayish? Is it a grayish green? Because it looked darker than that to me. No, it's unfortunate that the, the sample that the contractor brought to the building department a month ago, and they would say they got it to you. It's un it's unfortunate that that didn't make it. So if you came up, if you take a close look at it, I think you can easily see that it's a grayish green. It was the one that we found to be most like the slate that was we'd like to replace. Okay. Right, because I mean, but the one that's leaning up against your garage is the same material as what you had given to the um, building department. Yes. So, yeah, right. It was just a different piece. And my my impression of it was, you know, the color wasn't horrible and it wasn't you know totally solid one color, but what struck me was that the divisions, you know, the um, or the, the, you know, the, the, shingle, the size of the shingles was was really a lot smaller than slate. Mm -hmm. So it sort of didn't look like slate to me mm -hmm. um, from looking at that. And I looked at the the house of 28 Harrison, which, you know, that's not a bad looking roof. Um, nobody would ever think it's slate, but I, I didn't think this really resembled slate this much, although certainly being gray and as you said it had little tints of other things in it um would be the the most suitable color if um, well I'm, I, I would just like to say that up. it's almost 60 feet from the sidewalk to the garage no and i understand my, you're not right i'm sorry no i understand that you're not standing right next to it right. not anywhere near it and from that distance i don't think anybody's going to notice the other thing I sent, um, I sent Sarah pictures is that on the house itself, there is already asphalt shingles on the porch over the Harrison, uh, the, the roof over the Harrison porch, as well as a roof that can't be seen from anywhere. Um, that, and both of those have shingles. So this isn't any new kind of concept being introduced at 218 Elm Street. Mm -hmm. Is there slate on the main house? Uh, on most of it, they, like I said, there is some shingle where the slate has been replaced in a couple of places. Mm -hmm. From what uh, Sarah said to me, some of it was, uh, it was probably done before there was a historical commission. The slate in the back, which like I said, nobody can see, who knows when that was replaced. But like, the, the, like I said, this, the shingles on the house now that are about the same color as the shingles we want to put on. Um, so I, I don't think we're introducing anything revolutionary to 218 Elm Street. Does anybody else have any other comments? Any of the commissioners? Um, so my, my, I'll just, my feeling about this is, um, well, first of all, I want to just correct something that Craig said about uh, the longevity of the garage roof. This roof has been there almost 90 years. So um, the asphalt roof has a 30 year guarantee. Am I right about that? So it's likely to have to get replaced a lot sooner. So I, I don't think it's appropriate to say that it um, was low quality. Um, it may not be the same slate that was on the main house, but I don't think it was low quality if it's still standing after 90 years. Um, now, this is always a really dis difficult decision for us. Um, as I've said at the last meeting, we are stewards of this historic district. Um, it was formed for a reason, and we are tasked with trying to preserve the historic fabric of it. That's our job. And I, um, I realize this is a, uh, an ancillary building. 
um, you have some of this material already on your house. So that certainly weighs in my decision. Um, so I have to say I'm really split on this one. But I appreciate what everyone else is saying. Any other thoughts that people have to say? So, Amartha? Yes. Um, so I know that there's a hardship, you know, a hardship um, mm -hmm. remedy or uh, application to this. Um, how does that come into play here? Because I think that, um, you know, I don't want to set precedents either that if this were, if this roof were to be approved um, using an asphalt shingle as opposed to the original material, um, I wouldn't want, you know, a precedent to be set where because we've done it for one, you know, if it were approved because we did it for one homeowner in the historic district, then other people other owners would expect the same. Um, and so I'm concerned about setting a precedent like that. So I'm, you know, what has to happen, you know, but then I don't know what happens with a hardship either. Um, if this doesn't pass, say there's another split vote tonight, um, Steve can come back. Does he have to come back with another um, application for a hardship? Or how does that work? Because I feel like I would have a, you know, just, I don't want to set precedents um, so that the, you know, district ends up having to approve others, uh, you know, because we've already approved one mm -hmm. substitution of asphalt shingles, for, you know, for replacing um, slate. Um, so how does that work? You know, I feel like it would be easier to, you know, to pass it if it were done as a hardship rather than, you know, just saying, well, uh, you know, it's a, because it's a garage or it's not that visible from a public way, um, it doesn't need to be slate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll read you um, the definition of this. But I also just want to add too, is that, um, you know, we're talking about this later on the agenda. You know, when people purchase homes in this district, um, you know, our guidelines are online. They are available to anyone who wants to look at a house in the district, get on a house in the district. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to be factored in, into their decision. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that if we start, like you said, probably making exceptions to that um, because it wasn't thought through or whatever, um, you know, it becomes, um, it becomes a slippery slope. But let me read this. Um, okay, the, the ordinance directs the commission to consider whether a certificate of hardship should be issued if a project is found to be inappropriate. These may be issued when the commission finds that owing to conditions especially affecting the building or structures involved, but not affecting the historic district generally, Failure to approve an application will involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the applicant, and whether such application may be approved without substantial detriment to the public welfare and without substantial derogation from the intent and purposes of this chapter. And this chapter is pertaining, obviously, to the historic district. Um, yeah. No, I don't know if that clarifies or not. Mm. Okay, well, does anybody have any other comments that they would like to make, any observations? Um, we can, we, if someone wants to make a motion, we can vote on this. And the voting would be to um, grant a certificate of hardship. Oh, that's okay. So I'll make a motion to grant the certificate of hardship to allow the roof to be renovated and finished with the uh, the chosen asphalt shingles that are staged up there. Anyone want to second that? 
Barbara, you got to unmute yourself if you're doing it. And you're frozen. <laughs> There she there is. You got to unmute. I know it was it wasn't going away. I seconded yeah. that. Maybe somebody did it while I was struggling. It didn't. No. Okay, I second it. <laughs> uh, is there any discussion? More discussion? I agree. I'm torn about it as well. You know, um, it it's an historic district. People buy into it, knowing that it's an historic district. Um, you know, there are, you know, restrictions and rules and, um, you know, I hate to see the district, you know, little things being watered down, you know, not being, um, not being maintained the way they should be, but, but it's, it, you know, just, a t it's a tough decision is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Barbara, Craig? Nothing else? Right. Would, a, would a compromise solution maybe look like this? Because that is a hip roof garage. And you only really see the, the one of the four quadrants that are facing the driveway. So if the, roof, if the slate roof was carefully removed and salvaging enough slates to do the one quadrant that faces the street and then do the rest in the conventional modern shingles, but have one quadrant done with the original slate. Is that a, a compromise solution here? That was the first idea that we had when we spoke to the contractor and the slate that's on the other three sides that haven't collapsed yet are on their way. And it's not just the slate which, like I said before, is, is cheaper than the slate that's on the roof, which has lasted far longer. Um, the other problem is that because of the hole in the roof, water's gotten in and damaged the foundation, the structure of the roof. So that's why we had to um, include that in the proposal so that whatever's up there doesn't collapse. And that's gonna be, to me, more of uh, an eyesore to the neighborhood than a few asphalt shingles 50 feet away from Elm Street. The other thing is I just want you, you, you guys to know that I am a retired librarian and archivist. I was the archivist at Boston Latin School, the oldest public school in the country, 1630, sorry, 1639. Um, so I've done a lot of uh, con conservation and preservation of articles. We've had three, this is our third historical house. So we know that the drill. But so, which is why we looked and we found out that you do not have to replace it with slate. It says that it's if convenient or, or I forget the exact terminology to replace, replace with the original. Um, but this is something that is, it, there's plenty of, of asphalt tile in the district, including on my house. And the other thing I just want to remind you is, uh, I don't know if this is a hardship or not, but the two of us are trying to keep this house beautiful and historically accurate. But we're both 70 years old and we're on fixed incomes. So I don't think that the other option is we have to sell the house because the garage is caving in. That's all. Thank you, sorry. No, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's helpful, thank you. Okay, any other comments? All right, well, I think we should take a vote. Um, on the motion, which is to issue a certificate of hardship to Mr. Jones and Mr. Watson um, to replace the existing slate roof on their garage at 218 Elm Street with um, asphalt shingle. Okay, all of those in favor? But it has to, I'll do the roll call. Um, Barbara? Uh, yes. Martha? No. Craig? Yes. Pauline? Yes. Okay, so that passes three to one. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is the review of the Shepherd House porch at Historic Northampton. Steve, you're welcome to step. 
I guess not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know Lori was planning to join us, but I, she is not here. Um, so I don't know if we want to move on to the next item and then see if she comes to talk about this. Um, sure. Oh my goodness. Okay. Can I just ask a, a question when, when we get to the historic Northampton? I can't remember I, whether I have to recuse myself because I'm on the board because I know we've discussed and voted on other historic Northampton things and I can never, I can't remember whether I have to recuse myself. But we're not voting on anything, right, Sarah? No, you are. It's uh, um, oh. allowing the work under the historic preservation restriction. Okay. Barbara, I think you, you started off recusing yourself and then and we decided you didn't have to. so far removed from any sort of conflict that you, you felt comfortable okay. doing it. Right, okay. Okay. Um, do you want to move on to the draft letter? I just, I want to say that Greg's compromise suggestion, I thought was a very good one. Um, didn't want mm -hmm. that to pass without saying so. I agree. Well, I, I thought so too, because they were going to remove the whole roof. They just had to do it carefully yeah. and not just throw them off and break them. Yeah, yeah. But, Although I do know it's hard to dismantle the good roof at all. So. Well, it sounded as if he said his contractors told him they're not in good enough condition. Yeah, right. they could be reused. Yeah, so. that's too bad. Yeah, that would have been a good compromise. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. Well, yeah. I think they're probably going to take the whole roof off and rebuild it. Like There's the a hole. In it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. The whole thing is going to come apart. So. Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. what's about to happen. Yes, exactly. Okay, so just close your eyes when you drive by. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, Sarah, I know that you mentioned that you had sent a draft letter, and you did. And for some reason, it did yeah, not. Today. I'm going to get right now, but go ahead. Um, so, so we'll move on to that. The, sure. um, the outreach to new property owners letter. And if you can just bear with me while I print this. And um, so just to remind everyone, at the last meeting, we... Um, had a long discussion about um, the fact that there's several properties on Elm Street in the district that have recently sold or are on the market. And there was some concern raised about um, those folks being aware of their status in the district and what that entails. Um, apropos of our discussion earlier tonight. So um, Sarah had volunteered to draft the letter to um, that we would send out um, to uh, pers well new owners, I guess, of the in the district, and as a way to kind of orient them or remind them gently that they are part of this larger world that they can't remake the district to their specifications, and um, and we're here to help. So. I don't know if anybody had a chance to look at this. I think it was really great, well, Sarah, like, that you did this. I did, but but this is this is addressed to a listing agent, right? Right. Sarah, not to a homeowner. Right. Right. I, I thought it was. It I, thought it was if you I thought it was a really good letter. Yeah, me too. I thought it was effective. I just think that perhaps the letter should be given to um, to buyers, maybe as they walk through the door, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that they're you know that they're in receipt of it. And that they can truly base a decision, you know, make an educated decision as to whether uh, undertaking a home in the in the historic district um, is realistic for them. I can um, maybe tweak that idea a little bit, Pauline. Okay. Now that we have the capacity to put quite a few documents up on the MLS listing, oh, we should yes. put that letter that um, has been yeah. sent to the listing agent, right. put it up on the MLS and yeah. buyer agents will send all those documents to they their buyer. Yeah, perfect. And cool. I think I think that's the really the way to go. Is oh, to, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Getting this out when the house is sold, I think is too late. It is. It's, I, that's a great and, idea to upload it with all the documents and lead paint disclosure. Right. That it's in their hands right away. Yeah. And, and yeah, because we had that incident where um, it was the house on the other side of the street, on the odd side of the street, where uh, 
where Chris Thompson, who's one of the, the city's top preservation carpenters, was there, and they were doing stuff that was counter to the the district's regulations. And I was so shocked yeah, that Chris right. Thompson would do that. Didn't know, and I think it's the earlier we can get information out with that great link, that mm -hmm. link will be a hot link too on the uh, when mm -hmm. it gets put up onto the MLS. Yeah. So yeah. they can just click on it and bang, it's mm -hmm. it goes okay. right to that beautiful booklet. Yeah, that's so excellent. Just, so presumably that just the first sentence would have to be changed in this letter, maybe saying the house at such and such is part of the Elm Street local historic district, you know, which is disclosed in, in which is now disclosed in the listing or something like that. And then the rest of the letter I think would be okay. Yeah, I think you should be writing it so that you would invite them to disclose it rather than saying, gotcha, well, you haven't disclosed it. All right, well, maybe I'm misunderstanding who sees the letter. You're proposing to post something that isn't something that a potential home buyer sees those documents? No, so that document will be seen because we're, we would encourage the listing agent to enclose that as part of the online documentation about the house. Right. That this would be uh, seen by buyers before they even made a decision to come into the house. So okay. it would, uh, it would, it would get rid of the chaff, let's say, before they actually came there. If somebody was very opposed to the idea of coming to a house, hold on, let me get my wife in here. Okay. So the, uh, that's just my thoughts. We, the more we can make it welcoming and, uh, and disclosing this information, because there are realtors out there that don't know. They don't know, right. and um, this would be illuminating to them as well. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. I mean, I, I also think that I agree with with everything you're saying, and I think it would be also important to send this to someone, you know, new owners after they after they bought the house, just to remind them, and not to threaten, but to, again, to say we're here to help you. And How about if we one up that? If we send them a nice what is that? A booklet? It's like 50 pages, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have any, yeah. do you have like 10 or 12 copies over the next couple of years we could have, Sarah, that we could send out as part of a gift arrival to our beautiful city? We can send them there's, a welcome to I think thing. we have about 10 minutes and there's no more after that. Because <laughs> that would be a good welcome to the city gift. Here you go. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so um, we don't need to vote on this, Sarah, right? We just, um, it's just, we're approving, yes. Yeah, so I can tweak the beginning of it just to um, not be specific whether it's disclosed or not, but um, you know, just making, making sure the listing agent is aware. And Pauline and Craig, I'll just need your help to capture all of the, the new listings within the district. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, it looks great. Sure. Okay. Um, so the next item, I think we should go on to the historic Northampton um, at 6.30. And um, so they, um, as you saw from the documentation, um, they were awarded some funds through the CPA um, to restore the porch of the Shepherd House. And um, the what the images that they sent in the description just describes what they're doing. I thought it was really um, it was interesting what had been done to the porch uh, to I guess modernize it. She says here that um, porch was built in the 1890s, but there was there was uh, other uh, items, including the foundation, uh, redone in the 50s. Um, so anyway, they um, fortunately removed all the shrubs so we can really see what the situation is at the house. And did, I, did everyone understand what is actually being done here? So they're removing the steps 
um, both the front and the north side, they are um, removing that central baluster and um, railings. And then the photo from 1904, which is on the back of this, shows that they were much wider steps, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. And um, as well as the ones on the north side are wide too. So um, they're going to be putting those back and then also putting in railings that are code ADA compliant. We, uh, you know, restoring the existing columns, which are historic, we're doing the floor. And there are also some funny little details, I guess, on the steps on the north side. Yeah, that's that's true. True. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot of details going to be made to change. Yeah. They're not putting tall contemporary railings on that full breadth of that porch, are they? I think they're probably just putting a handrail on the stairs. Okay. Um, handrail on the stairs. Yeah. Good. Good. The handrail will meet code requirements. So the handrail is different from a railing. Right. I'm, sure, I'm assuming it's just a, um, and I would imagine given the width of the stairs, although I don't know, they would be up the center of them, although I don't know. But the black will minimize the impact of that visually, which is a good thing. Barbara, how does this rank in the remaining biggish projects left to do on the campus? Is there much left after this? Well, All the, the, the barn is the biggest one that there's okay. also a grant for, and we're about finished with emptying the barn. I think there were more than, I don't know, 600, 650 different things that were cleaned a little bit, catalog or inventoried, and then decisions will be made about what's kept and what will be deaccession. Um, it's been a huge project this summer. And then they're going to assess the structure and what will have to be done. So that's a big project. But I think that's the biggest one. And there may be something done to the Parsons House after that. Hmm. Wow. Okay, uh, well, so we do have to make a, we have to vote on this. Um, in the, does anyone want to make a motion? Am I the motion maker tonight? Sure. Yeah. I make a motion that we, ex that we accept the, the renovation as proposed and wish them good luck. And thank you, thank them for their diligence, discovering bad things. Anybody else want to second that? I guess Pauline, you have to. I can't hear Pauline. Can you hear Pauline? Because I can't hear Pauline. Okay. No. Okay. You're coming back. I don't know. I don't know what I need to do. You're, you're okay. I can oh, hear you now. There you are. Oh, okay. How weird. Um, I second it. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? Okay. We'll vote, Sarah. All right. Martha? Uh, yes. Barbara? Yes. Pauline? Yes. And Craig? Yes. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. So uh, I don't believe we have mail, or do we, Sarah? Probably not, because there's no mail at all today. No matter what. No. <laughs> Any other business? Anyone like to raise? OK. Um, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. OK. All right. OK. All right. Bye. Everybody. That's it. We can say goodbye. Um, have a good evening. Feel better.